Hi friends, it's Byron and I'm back. And you know what? We're talking RuPaul's Drag Race. You know it's All-Star Season 8. It is episode 5. The Snatch Game of Love is back. We'll tell you, I'll tell you what I think about that. What do you guys think about Heidi and her um exit? We'll definitely talk about that. And we'll talk about Jimbo winning again for the third time, but losing the, the lip sync. So Let's just dive right in like we always do and go back into the workroom. And like they always do, they counted up the votes. And But I don't understand why Alexis... Oh, you know what? I'm so dumb. I was like, I don't know why Alexis counted the votes. But they all three were um, in the bottom. Duh. So anyway, answer that question. Um... Alexis points out that the girls may be seeing Jimbo as a threat because she had won two challenges. And of course they do. It's like, then the rest of y'all need to step y'all pussy up. Jimbo is definitely dominating this competition right now. And I will go on record to say I'm team Jimbo. I picking Jimbo to win this season. And you know what? It's at the point now, I think like maybe two or three may have come before Jimbo. Um, that was internationally to the U.S. All-Stars or even to the U.S. competition. And it's probably time for one of them to win. And not to say that his win's going to be on that because this drag queen knows her shit. And I am Team Jimbo. I think Canada is going to win it. I, that's just all I'm saying. Jimbo is running it, running it, running it. Um, Let's see. The main challenge is a snatch game of love, as you all know. And um, the girls, of course, they're in the workroom and they're sizing each other up. Okay, fine and dandy. Whatever. So the first round of the snatch game of love, Heidi was in it with um, Kahana and James and... I can't even remember who the other person was. But anyway, you guys seen the show. But what I want to say about it is that Heidi was trying, period, like with her own persona of this pirate. But... <laughs> Heidi's thing with Kahana was a two-sided coin because they were there in the moment and we could all see that Kahana was definitely drowning and I'll bounce back and forth with this because when Kahana front confronts her she then says well I wasn't trying to do that I was trying to kick a joke back to you but I can understand exactly what Kahana was saying she's like bitch I'm already struggling I, I don't need the extra attention. Like, it's already, I'm already going down in a ball of flames. Let's not throw gasoline to it. And I, I, in my honest opinion, think that Heidi didn't mean it in that way, as in malicious, but it definitely came across that way. And I am not blaming it on the edit, but it did come off that way. Anyway, we may talk about a little bit more about that as we go on. The second group by far was the best group. But let me go back. Um... James was definitely, definitely, and we, of course, we saw that character a thousand times over, but definitely did shine in that group. And as Michelle said, yes, carried that group. All right. And the second group, the second group, of course, was by far the best group for me. And, um, of course, Jimbo was the winner. I laughed my ass off when he was going to be Shirley Temple. I was like, you know what? This is definitely going to be funny. I don't know. It's all in the look and the mannerisms. The tap dance was just there. I don't know. The little creepy dog just took me over. Jimbo knows exactly what he's doing. And I am here for it. It's a fly in here. I'm sorry. And then, um, let's see. Um, they go back to the workroom and um, the queens are gossiping. And, of course, we just talked about Kahana fronting confronting Heidi well Heidi's in her apology and fucking Candy like she's not even like done with the apology to Kahana and Candy like buzz in and it's like so I, I just don't understand like if you didn't say or as you said or whatever the case may be then Heidi tried to get like a cosign from Alexis and now she playing like extra fucking dumb girl did it happen or it didn't like I don't understand so I mean like the exact words probably didn't come out of her mouth as in I'm coming for you but, I mean, like, the intention probably was there. And I definitely believe that. What do you guys think? It's like, the bitch is winning. Who wouldn't? Like, but if y'all three were supposed to be in an alliance, why would you even, like, it's don't say it. Just think it. 
I don't understand why we go through these same things over and over again. But if they keep doing it, I'll keep talking about it. So um, the room get awkwardly quiet, as you guys saw. And I tried to like break the ice again. I knew in that moment that she was going to make the split decision that I am done with this. It was something that was already building, as you can see through the episodes, that it was like, you know what? This is it. I'm done with this shit. Whatever. And and I must say, I was working Friday, so I got to stay off of social media on Friday when they post an episode because, honey, as soon as the episode posts, people are posting about it and... I pretty much knew who the winner was and I knew something had happened to Heidi and I thought she got voted off because she made um, a Facebook post and it's um, of her cut off because she didn't want to show her looks because of the fame game and this that the other and I definitely get that and there may be a contract thing in there as well but um, yeah it's like you know I, I can't be on social media on Friday if I'm working and not be able to do this show all right um the runway looks Lala, if you're going to do, I know her and Alexis did a one reveal, but you can't just have a cloak on and then take it off. Like, I'm honestly surprised that she was safe. And I like Lala, but I'm surprised that she was safe. But if you're going to do one, do what Alexis did. But like Ross said, I personally didn't mind the black, but it would have been nice if she would have did like a brighter color. It didn't necessarily have to be white. It could have been like blue or something, but she was probably trying to go with the things in her eyes so it make it look okay and whatever was in her hair. But anyway, all in all, it was good. Lala, if you're going to do a one, one trick reveal, do it that way, sweet pie. You can't just have a cloak and then take it off. I, to me, I guess technically it was a reveal, but so anyway, um, Jimbo is the winner of the um, episode and Jessica Wilde and Kahana is in the bottom. And you know what? Okay, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And Jasmine comes out. She's the lip sync assassin. You guys seen it. She definitely looks way better than she did on her season. Like, it is coming together. I definitely saw her in um, RuPaul's Drag Race Live. That video is on this channel. You can definitely go see it. And she is there um, right after Drag Race. Um... Um, she definitely wins the lip sync. Like, I mean, I don't understand. Like, Jimbo, like, and, and I said last week, Jimbo, you need to do, like, a reveal or this or that. And it was there this week. You just did it against the wrong person. It's like, I, he tries, she tries and tries and tries and tries and tries again. I guess you're just going to have to keep getting those you know, $5,000 prizes for winning the, the, you know, the week. And then you're going to win the $200,000 in the end because this uh, money that you have running over is going to make these other skags richer. But anyway, keep doing it. You're going to get that. I believe in you. So, um, of course, no one goes home. It's like, oh, Hunky and Dory in Drag Race Land all can sigh a release. Um, friends, don't forget to comment, um, like, and subscribe if you made it this far to the video, through to, through the video. And, um, I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.